Some of you may be wondering how to take something like this, a 3D animated object, and convert it into 2D animation seamlessly, so as not to break the 2D animated look. But how? And why? Introducing a bit of 3D can help spice up your 2D animation with dynamic shots and pans, and help you out when you need to animate complicated objects like cars or even a cube covered in a bunch of shiny runes. But what's the right way to go about it? Sure, you can just throw 3D animated objects into a 2D cartoon, but the effect will be jarring and stick out unless you do a couple of tricks to make it fit in. Today I'm going to be showing you some examples of how I pulled off this effect in my own videos with my own special and, at times, admittedly clumsy methods. All the programs I'll be using in this video are free, so go ahead and install them and try them out for yourself if you're feeling frisky. First, you're going to need a 3D model. The most common free modeling program out there is probably Blender, but it kind of scares me to be honest. So we're going to look at Sculptures and Paint 3D. Both are free and pretty easy to get into in my opinion. I went through a lot of trial and error in my own videos figuring out the best way to do this. I did my best with what I had to varying results. Really, near the beginning it just meant using 3D modeled environments as the backgrounds like in Ninjas and Toto Mass Crusader. A lot of tracing over model screenshots. Here's the Sculptress model I made for that 3D spin in Don't Trust Horses. Sculptress lets you paint your model and has a flat shading mode. So I thought I could draw some of the lines on the model and then do a quick outline and I would be golden. The only issue is that the resolution on these is abysmal. That's no good. So I ended up using the lines as guidelines and then had to erase them. Oh, and I also had to trace the whole thing. Which sucked. I mean, the end effect looks great and it isn't too jarring when it switches from 2D to 3D. Uh, it just took a bit of time. However, it's also a little wobbly since I had to rotate the model by hand for each frame, so it's not exactly an ideal method. In my fulfillment video, I ended up doing the same sort of thing, but in Paint 3D, since the lines are a bit nicer looking, so I didn't have to draw them over and over again each frame, only the outline. You can also rotate the object more precisely, down to a degree, so it's not wobbly and rotates the same amount each frame. The problem is that Paint 3D has no flat shading mode, so I had to improvise by messing with the levels in Fire Alpaca to uh, make the colors flat. Then I drew the outlines and it turned out looking just like a 2D animation, so neat. Still, also time consuming. So recently I've been playing with Unity a bit, just making games and experimenting with things, and I found a new method that combines the best of both worlds. Unity has unlit flat looking textures, so I thought it could cook up a way to give the object an outline and... That way, I'd only need to draw a few lines to finish the job. So here's a little method I made of outlining the object. I put the object in, and then put a slightly bigger duplicate of the object, colored entirely black right behind it. When the camera rotates, the object does the same at the opposite rate, so that it always sits right behind the model at the same viewing angle. I thought it was clever, but it doesn't really work that well. Then looking around on the Unity Asset Store, I found a simple outline script that does what I was trying to do, but easier and better. So yeah, take this as a lesson that you don't always gotta reinvent the wheel. You can just use something that someone else who is smarter than you made. So, we got the outer outlines. What about the inner ones? Paint 3D textures don't carry over into Unity when you export, so I ended up having to model a few lines and put them onto the object itself. Doing this gives the object the outline and inner lines, and in the end you only need to draw over each frame a little bit to make everything look just right. This is what I used for the 3D bed shot in my 5 year anniversary video. For cube shaped objects with right angles, the outline script isn't really necessary since you know exactly where the lines are going to be and you can just put them there as opposed to like a rounded object. So I ended up just modeling the lines on the bed too, and it ended up looking like this. Parts where outlined objects intersect don't get outlines. It will outline just the whole clumped object, so in the end you'll need to go through and draw the lines there too. But hey, you'll end up saving time because of all the lines you didn't have to draw. It's not necessarily a perfect method, but for what we're going for it works great. And besides, a few hand-drawn objects here and there will make it look more organic in the end, adding to the illusion that you really did draw it all along. For the camera movement I had to do a bit of coding, but don't let that discourage you from this method. There's plenty of help to find online. I look up stuff plenty as it is. You shouldn't have to do any coding too complicated. The gist of the script is when I press certain keys, 
say the arrow keys, it will move or rotate the object just a bit. I can rotate by holding them, or it can step through it and take screenshots to trace over in an art program. It's super nifty. So, that's the farthest I've taken this, but how do we go further? Really, in all these shots, I'm just rotating a motionless object. It's not really animated, it's just a static object viewed from different angles. So if you really wanted a dynamic shot where the object is moving, you do the same thing except you 3D animate the object. That's kind of where my expertise here ends because, well, Blender. But have no fear, there's still plenty of resources at our disposal. I present to you Mixamo, a free online 3D animation database that has a massive range of animations to use. You can upload your own character and it will auto-rig it for you and let you preview the animations applied to that character. Then just download, upload it into Unity, and you've got an animated character you can view from any angle. Oh, uh, hmm. That's weird, I'm getting- looks like I'm getting a call. Huh, that's... Uh, sorry guys, looks like I'm getting a call from, a uh, Frost Drive. Yo, John Bob, what's up, bitch? Fucking fire off pocket animate net loser. Dude, don't even know what a good animating program is if it hit him in the pussy. Dude has to animate some pretend friends in a show about himself. You're a loser, John Bob. Even though you made more animations, and you're ahead of me in subs, I'm gonna substitute your ass for a... ass. Yeah, cause then you won't be able to sit down to animate anymore. <laughs> you, John. Okay guys, uh, today we're going to learn how to animate me killing Frost Drive. Let's see here. Okay, here's a great kicking animation. Very cool. Let me model a quick Frost Drive in Sculptress. Pop it into Paint 3D for a few more details. Import it all into Unity. Okay guys, we got the kick, we got the Frost Drive. What I'm basically gonna do is make a little physics simulation by launching Frost Drive and having John kick him as he comes down. I put a little box collider in John's foot here so that it can actually kick the Frost Drive model, which itself has a sphere collider. It just takes a lot of trial and error as I position things and play with the launch force of Frost Drive. Okay, let's move this here, and bam, there it is. Take that, Frost Drive! Ha! Yeah! Okay, now that we've made contact, I'll fine-tune it to make it just right. Perfect. Now, the camera rotation. What I do here is put a cube in the middle of the scene and turn off the mesh renderer, making it invisible. I parent the camera to the cube, pointing it at the scene and make the cube rotate constantly. Thus, the camera rotates around the scene like so. Sweet. Now all I have to do is run it and pause everything. This way I can step through the animation bit by bit and get the screenshots I need to trace over. Once I've gotten them all into my R program, I can trace over each frame, getting in all the lines that didn't quite come through right. Making everything just look regular, There, we finished the lines for John. Now, what I want to do here is add a few smears to John's spin here to make it look more fluid. Now, I'm going to play with how Frost Drive looks when he gets kicked. It needs to look very squishy. Uh, make the ice pop out too. And after that, as he flies away, I'll add some smears, some squash and stretch. Awesome. Lastly, I'll just add his legs and arms. Can't forget to make the hair floofies move with the momentum. And there it is, the finished product. So, I guess if I had just started out learning Blender, I probably would have gotten here faster and everything probably would be easier, but I don't know if that's the way I want to look at it. I think that 
you should always jump into things just kind of work with what you got see what you can do based on what you know experiment with things have fun that's kind of the whole point of animating and art you're just kind of having fun with things you're playing around with it don't stress about starting everything right the first time I think if you want to do something you know be it 3D animation or do something experimental with your shots. I think you should just do what you can based on what you know, based on what programs you have. Just do your best, experiment with things, and you're gonna do great. You tend to you tend to learn a lot through that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I want to know if you liked this uh, this format of me kind of showing my process. It's kind of a new thing I've never really done before. So tell me if you like that. Also, if you do happen to create anything based on the stuff I showed you today, uh, make sure to tweet it to me at the JRS World. And if you're not following me there, what the heck are you doing with yourself, man? You're missing out on so much cool stuff that doesn't make it to this channel. So go follow me there. Visit my Discord if you want to chat with me. If you have any questions on how I did stuff in this video, I'm always happy to help. Uh, thanks to Frost Drive for doing a voice in this video. Go check out his channel, but uh, make sure not to subscribe, and subscribe to me instead. Okay, thank you very much. Bye.